up guys, welcome back to The Garage. My name is Oakley, I'm glad you're joining me on this video today. And today we're going to be talking about how to remove the strings and the plates out of the baby grand. First thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is some of the different parts of the piano that I'm going to be referring to, just so that you guys understand the terminology that I'm going to be using, as well as the different parts that are specific towards this part of the teardown. The first thing I'm going to be referring to a lot of is the plate. The plate is this big cast iron part of the piano, which is what the strings are held onto when inside the cabinet. The next part of the piano that we need to know about is what's called the hitch pin. The hitch pin is the part of the plate that the string is attached to on the back side of the piano. The next thing you're going to hear me refer to is the bridge. The bridge is actually part of the soundboard, which is underneath the plate. The bridge is the back end of the piano, and that is where we're going to have our string termination point at the back side of the piano. If you don't know what the string termination point is, it's the part of the string or the wire where sound is not produced. So for example, the graph in the front of the keyboard side of the piano and the bridge on the back side of the piano are string termination points. That is the point in which the strings either start their sound within the middle or on the outside of it. There are two different string termination points at the front side of the piano, the keyboard side of the piano, and those two things on this particular piano are going to be referred to as a graph. That's on the bass side of the piano. And the treble clef side of the piano the string termination points towards the keyboard as the capo bar. Of course we have our strings. Now the bass strings are going to be referred to as strings. Uh, anything that has copper wound wires, those are going to be referred to as strings. The things that are not copper wound are going to be referred to as wire. And the wire is typically the treble clef part of the piano, the smaller portion of it. Now before you guys go ahead and start on this process, there's a handful of things that you need to do. You need to make sure that the piano is basically entirely disassembled. I have the lid, I got the keyboard, I got the legs, all that's taken off and disassembled in a pile right over here, uh, as well as on my workbench over there. So you kind of need to be at this point to be able to do this part of the project. So make sure that you go through, disassemble your piano properly, and take good care of it so you don't hurt anything uh, before you start to take the strings off. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take the felt or the dressings off of the strings. And what I wanna do is I wanna video record what that looks like. That way when I go to redress the strings, it'll look pretty similar. Okay, so I'm just going to read a little bit out of the book that I told you guys I'm using. Uh, and again, if you didn't see my introduction video, it's called Piano Servicing, Tuning, and Rebuilding. It looks like this. And I'm just going to go ahead and read for you what it says about taking note of your wires and your strings before you go ahead and remove the tension off them. And I'm going to be doing most of it exactly the way the book tells me to, uh, but there are going to be a few things that I'm going to do slightly differently. Uh, but it says, examine how the treble, the non-wound strings, loop around the hitch pins and make a sketch of the stringing pattern showing single tied strings, strings that loop around more than one hitch pin and extra hitch pins. Okay. Make a list of all the treble wire sizes from the high treble down through the low tenor, except for single tied strings. Every two unisons have three separate pieces of wire attached to six tuning pins. Piano makers never intentionally use two different wire sizes for one unison, so every two unisons must always have the same size wire. This means you only have to measure the first wire of every two unisons. And for those of you that don't understand what he means by a unison, is a unison is one note. For example, a C, a C natural, will have three strings. A B natural 
will also have three strings. And so those two notes, uh, or two adjacent notes, are going to be sharing the same thickness of wire for those two notes. Now fortunately for me, each section of the piano that I have for my piano has is an equivalent of six strings for the first top two sections, meaning that I won't have any single strings at the end of a section. So make sure that you go and observe the pattern on which your strings are wound from the tuning pins to the hook pins. That way you know to make the correct measurements when you actually go to do this. The book tell, goes into a little bit further detail about what to do next, but I'm going to take it a little bit out of order, mostly because I think I found a different way or a better way for me on how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and move to the part where I go ahead and start releasing the tension off of the strings. Alright, so the next part's the exciting part, and that's where we're actually going to go ahead and start loosening the strings of the piano. Now, one thing you guys need to keep in mind is that this is this can be very dangerous. So the average string tension in a grand piano is about 160 pounds, which totaled up over all the strings is about 18 tons of pressure. And so you guys have to be careful and have to keep in mind that when you loosen the strings of your piano, you have to do it gradually and evenly throughout the piano. If you just start go ahead and working on one spot and working your way down or up uh, and loosening as you go, just every single tuning pin, you run the risk of damaging your soundboard or your plate. So you have to be careful and do this evenly. So Arthur Redlitz, the author of the book that I'm using, the way he suggests on lowering the tension of the strings on your piano is to find the lowest three string unison. Then you're going to take the one furthest to the left and you're going to do one full rotation to loosen that. Then you're going to work your way up only doing the left of the three string unison. You're not going to do every single one, you're just going to do the left of the three string unison. Work your way up. After you do that, you go and find the lowest two string unison. And then you're going to relieve the left of all the two string unisons. After that, you find your single string unisons. You're going to loosen every other string. And then you're going to repeat that process and you're going to go back to the treble section starting with the three string unisons, then you're going to start with the middle string, work your way back up. After you've done the middle string, you're then going to go to the bass section and lower all the tension of the rest of the bass, so the two string unisons and the single string unisons. After that, you can then go ahead and lower the tension on the remaining right strings of the three string unisons. What I decided to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually color code the top of my pins so that I have my first set of strings, which will be black, and then loosening my second set of strings, which is going to be red, and then loosening my third set of strings, which is going to be my turquoise blue color. And so I'm going to go ahead and mark all those, and then we're going to go ahead and start lowering the tension on the strings. Now let me just jump in here real fast before we actually go ahead and do this. If you are going to do something similar to this, do it at your own risk. This can be dangerous stuff and when you're doing this, make sure that you're wearing some kind of eye protection, safety glasses, a face screen, so on and so forth. You want to be careful. This, is, this can be serious stuff. If you don't feel comfortable with it, call a professional. There's plenty of people that are expert tuners, expert piano reconstructioners, that's a word. Uh, so make sure you feel comfortable doing this on your own, okay?
All right, so I just lowered all the tension on the strings from the tuning pins, and now we're gonna get a close up and I'll show you what we gotta do next. So as you can see, now the string coils are just loose around them, but we need to go ahead and take the strings off the tuning pins. And the way we're going to do that is we need to remove what's called the becket, which is the part that of the string that's going through the pin. We need to just take some needle nose pliers and pull those out so that they're out of the way and we can go ahead, pull the strings out and then remove the tuning pegs from the pin block. So that's what we're gonna do now. Just jumping back in here real quick. I did two or three of these just to see how well it would go. Uh, what you should actually do is continue to then like turn your tuning pins a little bit and to a point where it can come out easier. Uh, the initial one turn isn't gonna be enough to just pull it out. And when I go and do even just another half turn, some of the times the, the bend in the becket ends up just like breaking. And so then you'll just have to go back later and pull that little piece out of the tuning pin. Kind of like these guys right there. You can see that guy's basically broken off. That guy is broken off. It looks like it's part of it, but it's not. So you can just go ahead and do another half turn to get a little bit more wiggle room out of it, or you can do like a full turn and just kind of break that Beckett bend, uh, and that'll be a little bit easier for you. And then you go back and pull that Beckett out of the tuning pin. So we have all the strings released from the tuning pins. So now what I'm gonna do is with the, the strings that have A graphs in them, which again are these guys, I'm going to go ahead and cut them just a little bit on either side of them. That way I can actually get them through here because you're not gonna be able to pull these coils through that. So that's what I'm gonna do next. And of course, before you go ahead and do this process, make sure that you're wearing some kind of protective things for your eyes or your face because I did one I did snip one of these strings already and it did fly across the garage so safety first okay so you saw me stop at the last copper wire that I just did and that's because this is the point where we need to do something with these low bass strings. And here's what we need to do. What you need to do is you need to get some zip ties, or at least I'm gonna use some zip ties. And we're going to take each of the bass strings off one at a time, and we're gonna keep them in order, and I'm just gonna loop them on to my zip tie. And then once I get all of the copper wound or the double wounded strings, we're then just gonna close it up so that we have them all in order. Okay, so that's what you need to do. All right, so these are all the single string unison notes. And I'm just going to clamp these together so that they're separate from the two-string unison notes. There are still more two-string unisons to go, but <clears throat> I'm going to clamp these off separately because that is the rest of the base section of the strings. So they want to know the difference or they want to know when the start and stop of the base section is. So make sure to clamp that off separately so they know when you're going into the next frame section. And 
lastly, I'm going to tie together the last set of strings there. Now finally, I'm going to go ahead and take this big bundle right here and then zip tie it together so it doesn't come undone. Okay, so now that we're done with the bass strings, now we're working on the treble wires. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some duct tape and I'm going to sandwich them so that they stay in order. The reason we want to keep these in order is because even though we're not going to special ship these to some string maker, we do have to know the gauge or the thickness of the strings are. So I'm going to do that outside of the piano, so I'm going to go ahead and sandwich all these strings within each section with some duct tape and then I'm going to take my measurements so I can do a little bit more precisely out of the piano. Okay, so I changed my mind. So I did the first set with some duct tape across it and it's not really keeping it as together as I was hoping it was. I still have it around the pin hooks in the back so they haven't gotten out of order, but I'm not gonna do that for the other two sections. Instead, I'm gonna go ahead, measure them with my calipers and then mark them, write them down so I keep track of them and go from there, yeah. Now that you got all the strings out, all that's left to do with this part of it is to go ahead and take the tuning pins out. When you take the tuning pins out, make sure that you're doing it straight up. That way you're not accidentally boring out the hole that they're sitting in in case you're going to reuse your pin board. Uh, and then also make sure to take note of the diameter of the tuning pin because if you're going to go ahead and use the same pin block and you have the original sizes that the tuning pin started out as, for example, this is probably a 2-0. Uh, you can then go ahead and bump up two sizes to a 4-0 and be able to still use the same pin block. So keep track uh, of any tuning pins that are a larger size diameter than the rest. One more quick little note is when you are doing your tuning pins, here's my first one. You got to know the diameter, which is the roundness of it, right? And so uh, take your calipers and in inches, right? It's going to be point whatever. Uh, and the kind of tuning pin you have, if it's a 1-0 or a 2-0 or a 3-0, is based on the thousandths of inches uh, below that. So in this case, this is a 3-0 because it measured out to be 0.2855 of an inch so yeah that's how you know what size your pin is or your tuning pin is and periodically you want to check to make sure that they're all the same thickness So we finally got all the tuning pins out and it took a while. So if you're watching this and you haven't yet taken your tuning pins out of your piano, I would definitely highly recommend the uh, drill approach. Uh, buy a custom tuning pin bit or socket uh, to use a drill because I think this took me probably about a total of like three hours. 
just hand cranking them out. So yeah, uh, go with the drill approach if you're able to. Um, but yeah, so that's how you take the strings and the tuning pins out of your baby grand piano. And I hope you guys learned a little bit on this episode, this quick tutorial. Well, not a quick tutorial, uh, but tutorial. So if you guys have any questions or comments, uh, please leave them below. Make sure to join me on the next video where I take the plate out of the frame or the cabinet. You'll see me take the pin block off of the plate and then we will take the plate out of the frame and that'll be the next video. So please join me on that one and I'll see you guys later. Bye.